We now come to questions to the Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I know the whole House will want to join me in sending our deepest sympathies to the family and friends of Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, who sadly passed away on Saturday. His leadership had a profound impact on our whole country and across the world. May his memory be a blessing. Mr Speaker, this morning I attended the service at Westminster Abbey to mark the centenary of the tomb of the unknown warrior. Armistice Day allows us to give thanks to all of those who have served and continue to serve and those who have given their lives in service of this country. We've come to the Leader of the Opposition, the Right Honourable Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join with the Prime Minister in his comments about Jonathan Sachs? Can I also send all of our thoughts to those affected by the terrible events in Saudi Arabia uh, this morning? Um, can I welcome the victory uh, of President-elect Biden and Vice-President-elect Harris, a new era of decency, integrity and compassion in the, in the White House? And can I also welcome the fantastic news about a possible breakthrough in the vaccine? It's early days, uh, but this will give hope to millions of people that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that when countries trample human rights at home and threaten our allies abroad, they shouldn't expect to be able to buy up strategically important industries in this country with no scrutiny, not least where they refuse the same kind of investments in their own countries? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr Speaker, one of the one of the many uh, merits of the excellent conversation I had yesterday with uh, President-elect uh, Joe Biden uh, was that we were strongly agreed on the need, to, for the, once again, for the, the United Kingdom and the United States uh, to, to stand together, to stick up for our values around the world, to stick up for human rights, to stick up for global free trade, to stick up for NATO, uh, Mr Speaker, and to work together in the fight against uh, climate change, Mr Speaker. And it was, it was refreshing, uh, I may say, uh, to have that conversation. I look forward to many more. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister spoke for many of us when he took a call yesterday to congratulate President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris on their emphatic win in the US presidential election. So does the Prime Minister now have any advice for his erstwhile best friend, President Trump, whose continuing refusal to accept the result is both embarrassing for him and dangerous for American democracy. Prime Minister. Well, uh, Mr Speaker, I had uh, and have a good relationship with the previous president. I, I, I do not resile uh, from that. It is the duty of all British prime ministers to have a good relationship uh, with the White House. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm delighted uh, to find the many areas uh, in which uh, the, Biden, the incoming Biden-Harris uh, administration uh, is able to make common cause with us. In particular, uh, it was extremely exciting to talk to uh, President-elect Biden about uh, what he wants to do with the COP26 uh, summit uh, next year, Mr Speaker, in which, as you know, the UK is leading the world in driving down carbon emissions and tackling climate change.